Gut doctor, I've been vomiting some blood. Should I be worried? That's a great question, and thanks for sending that in. This question by our subscriber is not uncommonly asked, and I can see why people might get concerned about the prospect of vomiting blood, but it's a question that I can't really answer without more information. So what I will do is to show you my thinking process to see how best we can answer this question. The first thing I will say is that anyone who's vomiting blood should seek medical attention immediately because even if it might not be a lot of blood in the vomit, it could herald a lot more bleeding to come. For that reason, presenting to the emergency department for assessment is eminently wise. What will happen when you present to the emergency department is that you'll be assessed for just how sick you are. In the emergency department, a minimum of four vital signs will be taken. These vital signs are pulse rate, respiration or breathing rate, blood pressure, and body temperature. There will be a focus on assessing your airways, breathing, and circulation, what we call the ABCs. Now, if you're young and fit, you may be compensating well in the short term, so your vital signs will be maintained in a relatively normal range. But if there's ongoing bleeding, then eventually there'll come a point where those signs will change. A fast heart rate, which we call tachycardia, might be the first sign that you're going into shock. Now, shock is a life-threatening condition that occurs when the body isn't getting enough blood flow, as may be the case when you're having a major bleed in the gut. If there's shock, it's imperative that we deal with it and resuscitate appropriately. That may involve administering fluids to help support blood pressure, whilst arranging for blood to be appropriately matched and transfused. At the same time, other tests such as blood investigations are sent off and a history and examination performed. The history and examination gives us valuable clues as to what could be causing the bleeding. The medical term, by the way, for vomiting blood is called hematemesis. We know that if there is hematemesis, the location of the site of bleeding is very likely going to be based in the upper gastrointestinal tract. So that could be the esophagus, stomach, or first part of the small bowel. We can refine this further through the medical history. Hematemesis that follows prolonged vomiting or retching could be due to a Mallory Weiss tear, which is a tear of the tissue of the lower esophagus. Fortunately, the hematemesis usually stops spontaneously in most patients, and the tear usually heals within 72 hours. Finding out whether the blood in the vomitus is fresh or coffee ground is an important question in the medical history. If there is a lot of frank, fresh red blood seen in the vomitus, then that can be quite serious and could suggest active bleeding from an arterial source or even from an esophageal varix. An esophageal varix is a large swollen vein in the esophagus that can occur in the context of a chronically damaged liver. Sometimes these large varices rupture by their own accord and the bleeding that results can be extremely serious and life-threatening. On the other hand, the appearance of vomitus that looks a bit like coffee, we call it coffee ground vomitus, is less likely to reflect active bleeding. We want to know an estimate of the quantity of blood vomited up. Many cupfuls of blood in vomitus is of course more worrying than seeing only a teaspoon amount. Examination is important too, because we can get some clues as to what could be causing the hematemesis. If we found evidence of chronic liver damage on examination, then that may be suggestive that a vigorous, fresh red vomit is coming from a bleeding varix. Sometimes on a rectal examination, we can find evidence of very fresh red blood and clots, and that might suggest a very active brisk bleed is going on. Sometimes, if there is only a small amount of blood vomited up, and if vital signs and blood tests are fine, doing investigations in hospital may not be necessary, and these investigations can be done as an outpatient. But after resuscitation for a major hematemesis, it's usual practice for patients to be started on an infusion of a PPI, which is a drug that is really effective for peptic ulcer bleeding. Patients also undergo a procedure called an endoscopy, where a thin, flexible camera is inserted through the mouth and inspects the esophagus, stomach, and first part of the small intestine. Not only can this procedure help to work out the source of the bleeding, but it can also treat the bleeding itself. For example, if blood is spurting from a vessel inside a peptic ulcer, then a clip over the vessel or even cauterizing the vessel with heat can be effective treatment measures. So in summary, what I can say to our subscriber who raised the question is, vomiting of blood can potentially be very serious and therefore it's important to seek medical attention immediately. 
The good news is that modern medicine is very good at identifying serious bleeding, finding out where the bleeding is coming from and providing treatment. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your questions and comments, so please post them below and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.